Hi, it's Mark Bosser, producer of the Pollock Automotive Podcast, and we're here with Mr. Bernard Otto Pollock, the big bopper himself of Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, and we're talking cars. How are you doing, Bernie? Doing very well. So we're talking about a 2011 Ford 350 Super Duty 6.7 liter diesel that had a problem with its electric fan. What was going on with this vehicle? So the, uh, the owner of the vehicle was uh, driving on a long trip um, up to the interior of British Columbia, which involves some pretty serious mountain drives. He had a long trailer on the back, drove fine uh, to Hope. If you're familiar with the geography here, it's about 100 miles from Vancouver. Drove fine. It's a pretty flat road. Once he hit the mountain, started hitting the mountains, the vehicle all of a sudden went into reduced power mode. There was warning lights on the dash, and he really couldn't pull the trailer up the hills. Um, and also the temperature gauge was reading pretty high on the vehicle. So he came back down to Hope and uh, made arrangements to have his trailer moved on and came back to Vancouver where we had a look at the vehicle. So what did you find? What was it going into reduced power mode? Well, basically it was going into reduced power mode because the engine was overheating uh, or running too hot. So it's a protective measure, which is a smart thing because a lot of people, as he mentioned, he goes, I didn't even look at my temperature gauge until, uh, until this started happening. And most of us don't tend to look at those kind of things, uh, although you should, especially, you know, should glance at it every once in a while. But especially if you're going up a, a steep mountain hill and you're towing something, that's a smart thing to always be looking at that. Uh, and few of us who drive do, and a lot of cars don't even have temperature gauges. But nonetheless, Ford has built that into the vehicle, so prevents the engine from uh, being damaged if it runs too hot. And we've seen that before with some other diesels. Um, what happens? It melts pistons and stuff. So what? Um, again, why was it going into reduced power yeah, mode? Yeah. Okay. So it was going to reduce power mode. The engine was overheating. Uh, we did some diagnostic and testing. The coolant was full. There's no leaks. This truck only has about 116,000 kilometers. Still not high mileage there was some trouble codes stored for the uh the uh radiator fan the electric uh radiator fan clutch and uh we did some testing and found some broken wiring to the uh, radiator fan so uh, an electric fan clutch what does that actually do and how does it work so um basically the the radiator there's a gigantic fan that sucks air through the radiator and the uh in, in the olden days, the fan would just be running all the time, but that, that draws a lot of power from the engine. So what they do is they put an electric, it's not needed all the time. They put an electric fan clutch in, so it, it, it engages and disengages the fan. Uh, and that's set by the engine computer. So when it reaches a certain temperature, the, uh, the solenoid engages the fan and the fan will, will run and draw more air through the radiator. So essentially that fan was not working and that's what was causing the engine to overheat. And of course, these, these vehicles have an extremely large cooling system. You know, they're meant to handle a lot of heat. Um, and you know, when, especially when you're towing something up a hill and that's when the problem showed up. The fan isn't really used all that much until you're really, you know, it's, it's a hot day and you're going up a, a steep hill and there's a heavy load. And what caused the fan clutch to not operate? Well, basically some, uh, I would say, I chalk it up to uh, kind of a not a very well manufactured part. And let's just get into some pictures right now. We can have a look at uh, truck. There's our um, F350 2011. It, this is a, this is not just a super duty. This is like a super, super duty in my opinion. It's a, you know, eight foot box, full crew cab. It's a super long, big truck. You can haul just about, about every, anything and everything with this vehicle. So the, um, anyways, there's the truck. The, uh, this is a sample of the two fan clutches. You see this okay, Mark? Yep. Okay. So this is a brand new fan clutch uh, assembly. You can see it's got a wiring connector, um, a little bolt, bolt on bracket. And uh, this is the old piece. Uh, and this is what we found was broken. I'll, I'll show a little more, cl another close up. I, we disassembled this connector off the fan clutch, but right here, there's a, a uh, bracket, plastic bracket that holds this wiring harness and somehow the plastic had deteriorated and broken caused caused this to start rubbing on the serpentine belt and broke the wires apart. So the actual fan clutch itself is great. It was really just the wiring connector. And of course the stubby piece that held it in place, it broke. So let's just look at a couple more close up shots here. Uh, there's the, there's the, there's a the little broken off nub here. Well, you can't actually see it. It's gone. And, um, uh, there's the new assembly. You can see this piece here with a little, uh, it's got like a little insulator that uh, allows this, this to rotate and float freely from the fan clutch. And we have one final shot here. There's our wiring connector. So you can see this, you know, as the thing broke apart, this, this popped out, 
was rubbing against the serpentine belt and caused the wire to stretch and break out of the uh, fan clutch uh, connector. So it kind of looks like the, the wiring connector is a separate part. We, um, can't you just replace that part? Well, you certainly think they would sell that part because it is separate, but uh, the answer is no. You have to buy as a complete assembly. And actually, come to think of it, because of the way it broke, the way it actually, the mounting tab on the fan clutch itself broke off. So as I was thinking about in hindsight, why didn't they just sell the wiring connector? Whereas I, actually, that wouldn't have, it would only partially have helped because of the actual mounting stub on the fan clutch was gone anyway. So um, I, guess, I guess they anticipated that somehow it was going to break and be defective. And again, is this more of a, a, a plastic part in maybe a high temperature change environment that's not really lasting as long as it could? If it was yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. That's, that's exactly, uh, it's exactly what it is. Again, another piece of plastic that failed. So this truck has a 6.7 liter diesel and that Ford's been using for a while. But I, I hope, I assume this is a better and more reliable than some of the previous ones that we've done um, videos about. Yeah, these are much, these are much better. They, there's a few issues with them, but really com comparative to the uh, 6.4 liter and then the 6 liter before it, a far superior engine. I mean, I was just thinking about when, when I was, you know, doing this writing up this podcast thinking, you know, they've been doing this engine for seven, eight years now. And there's really like very little trouble with it. You know, the, the six liter, I mean, within a year they were making revisions and changing things. And I mean, they knew right off the bat, that was a bad engine. And, uh, you know, they did use it till about 2010 in, in the vans, but really, um, you know, this, these are great. I mean, this, we've serviced this truck since it's all, since almost new, it's got about 116,000 kilometers. This is the first thing that's gone wrong and it's nothing really in the engine itself. So, so really, uh, you know, really good. It's a good, definitely, if I was going to buy a Ford truck, this would be the engine, the diesel to buy. So going back to that fan clutch, is there anything like 116,000 kilometers? That's pretty early failure for this vehicle that could easily do 500,000 or more kilometers. Um, is there anything that an owner might do to, you know, not have this fail? I really can't see what you could do because this part, uh, you know, this part is sort of buried down. I mean, it's hard to get, it's reasonably hard to access. So it's not like you could even reach down and break it. Um, I think it's, there's nothing really you can do. I mean, it's just manufactured that way. And, and maybe this is a one-off, it's a fluke, but you know, I'd say that, you know, yeah, there's, there's really the answer to your question is there's nothing you can do. It's, uh, it's just going to fail when it fails. So maybe if you have, if you have one of these and you're towing stuff, keep one eye on the, on the temperature gauge or it'll be obvious because it'll go into low power mode. Exactly. And that's kind of the key, but it's interesting, you know, in, on, in average city driving and on flat roads, there really isn't sometimes a lot of indication that your fan clutch isn't working. Um, sometimes a check engine light will come on to indicate there's a problem. But in the case of this vehicle, there wasn't, there was a stored code, but nothing to actually uh, turn the check engine light on. But yeah, keep an eye on the temperature gauge is really the takeaway too. You know, always have a look at that and keep an eye on it, especially if whatever age your vehicle is, especially if you're going up a steep mountain grade, any car, truck, you know, whether you're hauling a load or whether you're driving, because that's, that's really where engines get, uh, get cooked. So there you go. If you need some service on your Ford diesel, the guys to see are Pollock Automotive in Vancouver. You can reach them at 604-327-7112 to book your appointment. You have to book ahead. They're busy. Or check out their website, pollockautomotive.com. There's hundreds of, literally hundreds of videos and articles about all makes and models and vehicles uh, repairs. And, or our YouTube channel, Pollock Auto Repair. Again, hundreds of videos over the last five years. Or, of course, hopefully you're enjoying our new podcast. And thank you for listening. And thank you for watching. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.